Hello, and welcome to The Public Good. This is Yolanda Hill from the Partnership for the Public Good, or PBG, which unites over 275 community organizations working to build a better Buffalo. We're delighted to be joining you every Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Facebook Live and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 AM. Today we're joined by Megan Maloney de Zel Zelvedar of the New York Immigration Coalition and the Our City Coalition. We will be discussing the Our City Coalition, the Anti-Gentrification Summit, and how the coalition and these events connect to different issues impacting residents in the city of Buffalo. Don't forget to follow PBG on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, you can always get great information on our website, pbgbuffalo.org. The Public Good is sponsored in part by Univera Healthcare, real people who really care. You can watch videos from The Public Good, including our three minute recap videos on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Before we get started, I have a few quick announcements. On November 17th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Join the Our City Coalition for a conversation around topics ranging from affordable housing, community policing, immigration, and community control of resources. There will be two keynote speakers, Jacqueline Patterson, the director of the NAACP Climate and Environmental Justice Program, and Jumani Williams, New York City's council member of the 45th District. This event will take place at East High School, 820 North Hampton Street, and you can register for this event by visiting the Facebook event page or going to ourcity.org. Megan, our radio guest, and I, Jolanda, will also be talking more about this event later today. Another event on November 19th from 12 to 1.30 p.m., uh, the Buffalo Commons will be holding a Working with the Media workshop located at 617 Main Street in PBG's offices. There you will learn to effectively engage the media by building relationships and crafting your message. The workshop will also cover how to prepare yourself to answer difficult questions, how to effectively write press releases, how to connect to your audiences, and how to deliver a memorable soundbite quote. For more information on this, you can visit pbgbuffalo.org and RSVP at buffalocommons at cornell.edu. Um, and one more event is taking place on Wednesday, November 28th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at 724 Delaware Avenue. Um, this is about voting rights. So unlike many other states, New York has antiquated voting laws that discourage voting and deny many citizens the freedom to vote. Western New York voters and speakers from the Let NY Vote Coalition, including Susan Lerner, Executive Director of Common Cause in New York, will talk about common sense solutions needed to protect and expand the freedom to vote. You can learn more about this event at pbgbuffalo.org. Okay, so now we are here with Megan from um, the Our City Coalition and also from the New York Immigration Coalition. Um, so the first question I wanna ask you, Megan, um, is what is the Our City Coalition? Hi, Jolanda. Thanks so much for having me today and for inviting the Our City Coalition um, here to talk about some of the events we have going on um, this month, but also about the coalition. Um, so the coalition is a group of community-based organizations and individuals that have come together to put together a platform for the city of Buffalo, a solutions-based platform. Um, so we have just categorize that into essentially nine different important issues um, and we have solutions for those at the city level. Um, so the different areas are around education, immigration, housing, climate, cooperatives, frontline arts, policing, transit, and uh, food equity. Okay and so this coalition came together I think about last year mm -hmm. um, and you guys had an anti-gentrification summit last year as well so that was the first one right yes that's correct and how did that one go did a lot of people from the community come out yeah we had a great turnout um, I think you know it was it was really great to be able to have spaces where we had smaller workshops um, where we talked about you know both the root causes of gentrification but also you know what it looks like um, in our communities um, and in the different neighborhoods in Buffalo today 
Um, so, and we were able to have a keynote speaker last time as well, who, you know, talked about some of the work they had done and shared a lot of lessons learned. And we really had a lot of, you know, community members coming out, asking questions, learning more, um, and also, you know, learning what are some of the solutions and how to push forward for them collectively. Cool. And so, so you guys have different, uh, nine different um, issue areas that you guys focus on, mm-hmm. the R-City Coalition, uh, or that we focus on, because I'm also part of the R-City Coalition. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so out of all of these issues that the R-City Coalition focuses on, what does the coalition think, or um, from working with community residents, think is the most press- pressing issue that the city of Buffalo is facing? So I think from our perspective, one of the reasons that we came together and have all of these different platform points is because, you know, our communities and in the lives of the residents of Buffalo, these issues are not, you know, neatly in little buckets. So we put them together and we can't necessarily say one or the other and we're not going to pit them against each other because, for example, if we deal with affordable housing and we're able to get inclusionary zoning, um, but we don't deal with climate justice and we don't deal with people being able to pay their pay their light and gas bills, um, then we're not actually building a city um, where the residents are able to live and thrive. Um, In addition, you know, if we do deal with some of the issues, but we have our neighbors and our friends being supported, then it doesn't necessarily matter that we are able to have affordable rents, right? And so that's why we came together as a coalition to have an entire platform Um, Because our communities are intersectional and we can't piece out, you know, one issue or the other. Yeah, that's a very great question. I mean, very great answer um, because no one issue is more important than the other and they are all connected or interconnected. Um, And so this month, uh, April Baskin, she or the Erie County proclaimed the month of November as anti-displacement month. Can you describe what that means for our viewers? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that we try to do as a coalition is kind of have a month where we kind of highlight all of these different issues. Obviously, the Anti-Gentrification Summit is our biggest event, um, but we had the kickoff of the month um, sharing the proclamation at the county level um, that this month was Anti-Displacement Month. Um, The city also came out um, with a proclamation from Councilman Rivera Um, supporting Anti-Displacement Month this month as well. Um, And then throughout the month, we have different events. So um, we had a subsidy tour um, that happened last week um, that really highlighted kind of what public dollars are being used for in Buffalo, Um, both how those can be detrimental to the community, but also how when they are used correctly um, and with community input and community voice, um, they're able to build up a stronger community. Um, So I wasn't able to make that tour, but I know you were there, so I don't know if there's anything else you want to share on that tour. Yeah, so the subsidy tour, for those who don't know, the subsidy tour it was just a tour that the R-City Coalition put together to highlight different developments in the city of Buffalo uh, that received um, some tax breaks, some tax tax breaks, generous tax breaks, um, and aren't necessarily... Um, aren't nece- and the community isn't necessarily seeing the benefits of like those tax breaks that th- those developers have received. And so we went around the city of Buffalo and uh, those developments were highlighted. Uh, for example, School 77 was a good example of how um, if community, uh, community dollars are used in a correct way, what the outcome of that can be. Um, And so School 77 is a building that has received some sort of tax break. And as a result, um, Push Buffalo has been able to provide affordable housing to um, um, our senior folks um, in the city of Buffalo. Um, And it it is also a community um, safe space for community members to uh, come and engage in in, in, in different activities. Um, right? And so do you have anything to add about School 77? Yeah, I think one of the other cool things about School 77 is in addition to the affordable housing, um, we are also able to have a community solar. So on the roof um, is a solar array um, that's not just owned by one person, but the benefits are distributed um, throughout several community 
members um, and residents of the building. Um, so it's, you know, also looking at climate justice and, you know, very large bu buildings tend to have a large footprint, um, but this was redeveloped in a way that was both, you know, sound in terms of energy efficiency, but also taking advantage of this roof um, in order to also produce energy um, that is, you know, owned by the community. Yeah, so Soul 77 was like a positive highlight of um, how subsidies can be used in a good way. And then we also went to see One Canal Side, um, which is a development that is, is, is a good example of how uh, a subsidy uh, wasn't necessarily used in um, the most beneficial way for the community. Um, and so that's what the subsidy tour was about. Um, and so another event taking place in November... Yeah, so we actually have had, had two events today before the summit on Saturday. Um, one, I believe, happened this morning, um, Heap Open today. Um, and as many of you, um, I'm sure, know and have experienced, you know, the ability to have support for being able to pay um, your electric bills and heat bills is huge for the residents of Buffalo. Um, so our, one of the members of the coalition Push Buffalo was out in the heat line this morning talking to residents um, both about, you know, what does heat mean, but also what are some of the, you know, more solutions um, and to talk to them about the anti-gentrification summit. Um, and then this afternoon, um, to my organization together with the um, Buffalo Area Immigrant Refugee Roundtable um, is hosting a panel discussion around refugee resettlement um, and the impacts in Buffalo. Um, so when we talk about displacement, um, we talk about displacement on a global level. Um, so for many years, Buffalo has been receiving um, some of the world's displaced people in, um, in the form of refugee resettlement. Um, and that has really contributed uh, both to some of the neighborhood um, development, um, but also has, you know, improved the lives of those folks who are able to come live here. Um, so under this administration, there's been a huge cut um, in refugee resettlement. So that panel today is going to talk about what that means for Buffalo um, and what that means, you know, what are some solutions that we can work towards. Uh, that'll be from 4.30 to 6 at Lafayette High School um, today um, on Tuesday. And then on Saturday is our big event. Um, so that's our second annual anti-gentrification summit. Um, it will be all day from 10 to 3. Um, and we will have a combination of keynote speakers as well as workshops. Um, each of the workshops will kind of focus on these different areas. Um, so they will go through kind of what the issue is, what the coalition is working on, um, and how, what is the, the plan moving forward in order to win each of those issues. Um, and then we have two keynote speakers, uh, Jacqueline Patterson. She's the director, um, as you mentioned, of Climate Environmental Justice for the NAACP. Um, so she's just going to share some of her experiences from the national level. Um, and, you know, their, um, their program is really focused on supporting community leadership. Um, so we'll hear from her. And then Jamani Williams, um, who's a New York City council member, um, he also, you know, has done a lot of work on supporting community-based development in New York City. Um, and then he took that to the next level this summer um, in challenging Kathy Hochul um, in the race for lieutenant governor. Um, and he's really been an example of a person from the community who's been organizing and working for a long time that has decided to go into elected office and run for office. Um, and he was able to do it at the city council level um, and obviously, you know, had an interesting race and got very close um, at the state level to beating Kathy Hochul. Um, and then now he's running for a public advocate um, in New York City. Yeah, so those sound like two really great um, keynote speakers that are going to be at the uh, Anti-Gentrification Summit this Saturday. Um, so if you guys want to learn more, you can visit the Facebook event page. Um, it's just called the, um, it's on the Our City uh, Coalition's Facebook page, and it's called the Anti-Gentrification Summit to learn more. Um, and so moving on from that, can you, do you know or has the Our City Coalition ever discussed like what the ultimate goal of the Our City Coalition is? Like what does the Our City Coalition ultimately 
what would we like to see for the city of Buffalo? Yeah, I think that we both have very specific goals that are short term that are laid out in each of the planks. Um, but then we also have a more long term kind of broader vision of a city of Buffalo where long term re- residents, communities of, of color, um, low income communities are really supported and are able to thrive in our city and are not being pushed out um, and are able to have access to jobs, to housing, to transit um, in a in a way that that is not how Buffalo has been working currently. Uh, we especially are looking at like how the city both has policies, but also how um, they use their public dollars um, to ensure that that we're actually supporting the communities and long term residents um, to be able to build their own neighborhoods and have community control. Um, yeah, and so speaking about the anti gentrification summit. Can you describe for our viewers what the term gentrification even means for those who may be wary about coming to the summit just because they don't even understand the title of the summit um, in the first place? Yeah, I think, you know, gentrification is uh, can be a fancy word, but the reality is that most people in Buffalo understand exactly what it means. And what it means is right now, you know, we have all these narratives about, you know, building a new Buffalo and our resurgence. But what that really means for community residents is public dollars um, going to support very wealthy development, um, increased rent, um, people who are long-term residents being kicked out, Um, people not being able to find affordable housing, small businesses as well who have been in the neighborhoods for years being um, pushed out. This is a very long-term process, and it's a process that is not just local to Buffalo. So oftentimes, you know, as people are being pushed out and gentrified out of larger cities um, like New York City or Chicago, you know, they will be they often come to smaller cities like Buffalo. And then there's a whole another set of processes of them trying to push people out um, from, the, from the neighborhoods um, that are long-term residents. So I think while it's, you know, can be very complicated how it's done in the long-term process, usually it starts with incredible divestment from neighborhoods. Um, so we see, you know, we've seen for generations not funding public schools, not funding parks, not funding community safety, you know, and, and we continue to see the divestment. And then as the, the divestment continues and people are pushed out and property values decrease, there's a wave of people who take advantage of that and who buy up properties and then are trying to get investment for communities, um, rich communities that are not from the neighborhood so they can take it over. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that was a good explanation. Um, I think you can probably add to it a lot. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, that uh, definition, it definitely um, takes into account that the divestment aspect, and I don't necessarily know if many people think about, like, the divestment that communities experienced um, initially and how that divestment makes it easier for those who have access to resources and capital to invade Mm -hmm. these communities um, and then start to invest in these communities um, very inexpensively. Um, So no, I thought that was a great uh, uh, definition. Um, What I will say is that the Fruit Belt uh, community um, was able to see that happening to their community um, and was proactive enough to take action and Mm -hmm. to start a community land trust, which wasn't an easy process, which was about three years in the making and have been able to do tremendous things in the Fruit Belt in order to avoid um, the displacement of longtime residents, um, mostly people of color, um, but other folks as well from being displaced by people who have um, more resources and people who just aren't from that community. So um, so that's essentially what gentrification is, and that's what the summit uh, will be highlighting, some of that um, talking about affordable housing and ensuring that people aren't displaced and talking about solutions. Um, and so can you explain or do you have any examples of how else people can get involved with the Our City Coalition outside of the month of November? Yeah, so our the coalition um, has you know been working for for over a year now. 
Um, and so we have a website where you can look and kind of dive into each of the different platforms. You can follow us on social media. So we have a Facebook page and also a Twitter. Um, so right now in the short term, we're looking to, you know, to really focus on the summit and out of each of those working groups um, and each of those platforms, uh, there's kind of um, both different but also united agendas on how to move those forward. Um, so we're looking forward to the next year of what is the city budget going to look like and what is our budget going to look like. And so what, you know, what are our budget asks going to be for the city of Buffalo that actually, you know, support community control of resources and support long term residents being able to stay in their neighborhoods, support community policing and community safety. Um, so we'll be definitely um, building out what that looks like. Um, and then we'll also be, you know, working at the council level to see what our kind of the different legislations that we're going to be supporting and rally, rallying around. Um, some of those are, you know, long term in the making. Inclusionary zoning is one of those. Um, and others, you know, are, you know, more um, working on the administrative level, like in the food equity. Um, and they're definitely working with the Board of Education to ensure food equity um, it, within the schools. Um, so each of the different platforms look a little different, but I, we're definitely going to do a lot of work around the budget. Um, and then, you know, to ensure that we hold our council members rep um, accountable um, for actually implementing these policies. Uh, cool. And so I know that, I know uh, 2019 is election year. Mm -hmm. And so just from sitting within, you know, the coalition, our city coalition, I know that we may be trying to strategize on ways to um, ensure that our elected officials are more representative yeah. of what it is the city res residents want. And so do you know of specifically what the our city coalition is trying to do to uh, take advantage of the fact that it is election year in 2019? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the reality is, you know, there are certain issues that we have to make sure that uh, where we have to know where our council members are at. And so while oftentimes we hear, oh, no, we support affordable housing, um, but the reality is they're not actually passing inclusionary zoning. So I think this in the next coming months is really to hold their feet to the fire and say, if you are supporting inclusion in affordable housing, community control of resources, and that means you're supporting the land trust. That means you're supporting resources for the land trust, but that also means that you're passing inclusionary zoning and you're voting for it and you're committing to that. Um, and if you don't commit to that, then we're going to make sure and ensure that the community knows that you are not upholding the values of the, of the, rep, of the coalition and of what, you know, a Buffalo that actually, you know, looks like the community members um, and is ensuring that those values are at the table. Um, so I think that it's, you know, it's an election year both for the city council as well as the school board. Um, and, you know, as you know, we have the education platform. Um, so I think we'll be doing both of those. Um, and, you know, separately continuing to um, continuing to hold those folks accountable. And if they're, you know, and really getting the word out in the community, if they're not supporting the community, um, making sure folks know that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so you will be hosting a workshop yes. at the anti gentrification Summit, which will be on immigration. Yes. Yeah. Can yeah, you describe more true. about like what your workshop will be about? Yeah. So we are going to host a workshop on, around immigration. Um, our immigration focuses on kind of two different aspects, um, the plank. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be starting off playing a game of life um, and we'll have some role plays uh, for people um, that have different immigration statuses. Um, and so they will be rolling the dice and kind of, you know, figuring out, getting into different situations and kind of what path that, that takes them down. Um, so we'll kind of through that game and that experiment kind of show people what it's like to live with different statuses, how that impacts their ability to like thrive and be safe within the city. Um, and then we'll be going into a little bit more talking to folks about what feeling safe looks like um, and specifically what that looks like in terms of like policing and immigration enforcement. Um, we have some policy solutions around disentangling 
what you know the Buffalo Police's role is and what immigration enforcement's role is. Um, and so, you know, we live within 100 miles of the border, so that means, you know, Border Patrol has um, a lot of ability to be present in our communities, to be on transportation, you know, and we want to make sure, one, that, you know, they're, if they're here and they're doing their job, but we want to make sure that local resources are not, you know, going to immigration enforcement. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about what those details are. Um, I will be doing it together with the UB um, law clinic. Um, they have, you know, there's a group of students that have been helping on this, um, as well as a, with a local group, Justice for Migrant Families. Um, so they're a group that works um, primarily on issues um, relating to the undocumented community. And this has been a priority um, to ensure um, that we get policies on the books um, here locally. Um, and then, you know, we, will, we won't be focusing on it that much, but we will also be talking um, about language access at the city level. That's the other piece of our plan. Okay, well, thank you so much, um, Megan, for coming in and sharing with us what the Our City um, Coalition is all about and uh, what your workshop will be on, which is immigration. Um, I will also be instructing a workshop with um, India Walton and Danny Johnson, um, and we will be doing a workshop on policing and how to make communities safer without increasing police presence um, in Buffalo's most vulnerable communities. Um, and so thank you guys for joining us. Um, again, this is Jolanda Hill with the Partnership for the Public Good, an organization that unites over 275 organizations to build a better Buffalo. You can join us next week when we speak with Zaid Islam of the Fruit Belt Community Land Trust or the FB Community Land Trust. That'll be Tuesday, November 20th, 2018 at 7 p.m. for the public good. It's a public good Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 AM. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you.